this video is the second in a series about solubility equilibrium. Uh, the first video covered the first two bullet points and this one is all about converting between a KS value and a solubility value. Um, what we're going to do on this video is first have a think about how these two things are linked. If we remember that a KS value is an equilibrium constant for a salt dissolving, uh, if we take calcium sulfate as an example, the equation for the salt dissolving is this one right here. Uh, those sulfate ions should have an aqueous symbol after them. Uh, once we have this equation, we can write the KS expression. It's the equilibrium expression for this reaction. And uh, remember that the salt being a solid will actually not appear inside the equilibrium expression at all. So it will just be the calcium ions and the sulfate ions. Um, so now if we were to say... Um, take some calcium sulfate and put it inside a beaker of water, what is going to happen is that the calcium sulfate will at least at first dissolve and will get a certain concentration of calcium ions and sulfate ions. And if we put in some more calcium sulfate, we may be able to increase the concentration of those two ions because more of it dissolves. Um, however, we can't keep doing this forever. We'll get to a certain point where we've reached the maximum amount of salt that can dissolve in a given volume. And if we were to try and put in some more solid, it wouldn't dissolve. So the solubility reaction has reached its equilibrium point. And um, at this stage, if we enter the iron concentrations we have in the solution into the Ks expression, we would actually be able to calculate the Ks value. What this means is because the limit of how much ions can fit in the solution is determined by the solubility value, it means that there is a link between a solubility value and a Ks value, and we can convert from one of them to the other one. So this is how we convert from one of these values to the other. Uh, it is different based on the formula of the salt. If we had a salt with the ions present in a one-to-one -one ratio, such as any of these ones here, we would describe it as being an AB salt. And um, for any of these salts, the way the mathematical relationship works is uh, always the same. So we'll grab one of these, such as silver chloride dissolving to release silver and chloride ions. And um, a certain amount of the salt will dissolve uh, inside one litre of water to give us a saturated solution. We'll let S represent the amount of moles of the salt that will dissolve inside this one litre. And now that we've defined this, we can express the um, concentration of the ions in terms of S. And this allows us to remove, reduce the number of variables inside our KS expression and it means we can find a relationship between these two things. So we're going to predict uh, the iron concentrations as a result of this amount of silver chloride dissolving, so S moles of it will dissolve in a litre, and because we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio, it means as a consequence, both the iron concentrations are going to be S moles per litre. Um, if we have a Ks expression, we can now find a mathematical relationship between the Ks and the solubility value. Uh, so if we have a Ks expression for this reaction, and this is what it is. And um, I might just move uh, a few things out of the way. What we can do is that we've redefined our concentrations in terms of S, so these can now replace the square brackets inside our KS expression. So our KS expression becomes simplified. The KS value is going to be equal to the solubility value squared. Uh, the maths end up being, ends up being a little bit different if the salt formula is not a one-to-one -one ratio. So if it was either a 2 to 1 or a 1 to 2 ratio, this is how it's going to work out. Okay, so it could be um, any salt such as these. 
Uh, if we take an example of silver sulfate, there are two silver ions for every one sulfate ion. Uh, we write an equation um, for this dissolving, we must take this into account. Uh, and it means that for every one mole of our salt that dissolves, we're going to release two moles of silver ions. Uh, just like before, we're going to define S as being the solubility of our silver sulfate uh, in moles per litre. And once we've done this, we can uh, express the ion concentrations in terms of S. So we will say that when S moles of the salt dissolves in one litre, the concentration of the silver ions, because one mole of the salt releases two moles of silver ions, will be two S moles per litre, whereas the concentration of the sulfate ions will just be S moles per litre. And uh, the next thing we need to find the relationship is to have a Ks expression. So we write this, and remember that if we have two moles of something, then it must be the concentration of that substance squared inside the Ks expression. And once we have this written, the parts in the square brackets can be substituted by our values in terms of S. So if I just get the stuff that we don't want out of the, um, out of the way, that means that silver ion concentration can be 2S moles per litre and sulfate ion concentration is S moles per litre. Um, when we do this, we will find that um, the number 2 ends up appearing twice inside the Ks expression. It is perfectly normal. The squared is still present, so it must be kept there. And um, this will happen uh, for every one of these calculations, and it's how it's meant to work. It's the only way the numbers stack up properly. If we expand out our brackets and then we simplify, we will find that the Ks value is 4s cubed. So we've got these two relationships, and they will work for any A, B, or any of the other two salts. But sometimes we might want to work out the uh, solubility value when we're told the Ks value. In which case, we could rearrange the top one by square rooting both sides. And when we do this, we will find a new relationship, which will be the solubility is equal to the square root of the Ks value. Uh, for the other example, uh, to rearrange this, we want to make solubility the subject, so we divide both sides by 4. And then to get rid of the cubed, we would cubed root both sides. And the cube root and the power of 3 will cancel each other out. So we're left with our final relationship, which states for these salts, their solubility value is equal to this cubed root of Ks over 4. Now, here are a couple of questions that involve calculating the Ks value from the solubility uh, value. And um, I think maybe for clarity, I will not use the shortcuts mentioned just before. And what we'll actually do is work each question out completely from the very beginning. So for the first example, we would have a calcium carbonate equation dissolving in water. And we'll have a Ks expression as well. And we know that this is the solubility of calcium carbonate, which means the calcium ion concentration and the carbonate ion concentrations are both going to be these numbers here. Uh, we can substitute these in directly into the Ks expression. And uh, the number we're going to get uh, as a result is going to be the Ks value for the salt. Uh, if you notice what we've done right here, we've actually just done Ks is equal to the solubility squared. Similar story with calcium hydroxide starting from the very beginning. A equation dissolving and a Ks expression. We know that this many moles of a salt dissolves in one litre. So we express the iron concentrations as a consequence of this. Now because one mole of a salt will release two moles of hydroxide ions, uh, the concentration of hydroxide ions will actually be double the solubility value. 
if I was to take these numbers and substitute them directly into the brackets, we would end up with uh, this as a KS expression. And uh, if we solve for the answer at the end, we will have the KS value. If we look carefully about what's going on here, essentially what we've done is that the KS value is 4 times solubility cubed. And um, there's the final answer. Now these next questions um, go the other direction. So we have the KS value and we need to calculate solubility in moles per litre. Uh, we'll start off from the very beginning in um, each case as well. So we have a solubility reaction and a KS expression for that reaction. And uh, next thing is we'll do is that we'll define solubility as being S, so S is the solubility in moles per litre. This means S moles of the salt dissolve in one litre, and as a consequence of that, we can express the iron concentrations in terms of S. We can substitute these in directly into the KS expression, and we end up getting KS being equal to S squared. We know the KS value and we must solve for S, so we rearrange to make it the subject. The KS value is given to us, so we just enter it into the equation. And the number we get as a result is going to be the solubility of the salt in moles per litre. Uh, the next example is a 1 to 2 iron ratio salt, so we could call it an AB2 uh, salt. Uh, we have an equilibrium expression for it dissolving, and we're going to have a KS expression as well. And uh, just like before, we're going to define S as being equal to the solubility of the salt in moles per litre. And then based on that, we can predict that the magnesium ion concentration will be this, and the hydroxide ion concentration will be this, because two moles of it is released. We substitute these numbers directly into the square brackets and we end up getting Ks is equal to this. If we expand the brackets and simplify the whole formula, we've got Ks is equal to 4s cubed again. Uh, if we were to rearrange to make s the subject, we're going to end up with s being cube root of Ks over 4. We are supplied with the Ks value in the question, so we substitute this into the uh, cubed root, and when we do this, uh, it is important to bracket this, otherwise the calculator will not give you the correct answer. And um, if you solve this on a calculator, we have got the solubility of the salt uh, in moles per litre.